In this video, we will discuss Korn syndrome, which is a primary hyperaldosteronism. Before I start discussing, I have few important exam questions. We'll go through the topic and get the answers. And after the topic is done, we'll also discuss the questions. So question number one is, which drug causes medical adrenalectomy? Number two, what's the difference between primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism? Number three, what's the renin source and function? Number four, how potassium and hydrogen ions are excreted? Number five, what's the site of action of aldosterone in kidneys? Number six, why there there is metabolic alkalosis in Korn syndrome and number seven what are the sites of reabsorption of sodium in the nephron now let's discuss Korn syndrome Korn syndrome is a primary hyperaldosteronism and what's primary hyperaldosteronism the pathology is in the adrenal cortex so what are the causes of primary hyperaldosteronism in one third of cases it's due to adrenal adenoma and in two-thirds of cases is due to adrenal gland hyperplasia which may be idiopathic con syndrome mostly unilateral solitary well circumscribed aldosterone producing adenoma so it's a aldosterone producing adenoma with the lipid laden clear cells in zona glomerulosa aldosterone is produced in the zona glomerulosa so what's the site of action of aldosterone in the kidney aldosterone increases the distal tubular and collecting duct reabsorption of sodium in exchange for secreted potassium and hydrogen what's the effect of corn syndrome on aldosterone number one aldosterone secretion does not decrease appropriately in response to volume expansion normally when there is volume expansion aldosterone secretion decreases but in corn syndrome it doesn't number two the ratio of aldosterone to renin of more than 30 strongly suggests autonomy of aldosterone secretion. Now, what are the urinary features in Korn syndrome? Number one, neutral to alkaline urinary pH due to increased secretion of ammonium and bicarbonate ions to compensate for metabolic alkalosis. Number two, protein urea in 50% of patients with primary hyperaldosteronism. And number three, renal failure occurs in 15% of patients. So proteinuria in 50% and renal failure in 15% of patients with Korn syndrome. And there is polyuria from impairment of urinary concentrating ability. And there is metabolic alkalosis in Korn syndrome. Why? Because increased serum bicarbonate causes metabolic alkalosis due to hydrogen ion loss in the urine. Tetany from metabolic alkalosis may also occur. And the last feature here of the Korn syndrome is there is renin suppression. Now clinical features of the Korn syndrome. Age of onset 30 to 50 years. Male female ratio is 1 to 2. There is hypernatremia with volume expansion. Number two, diastolic hypertension that is resistant to standard antihypertensive therapy. Number three, hypokalemia. And what are the features of hypokalemia? Rhythm disturbances, including EKG features of flat or U pre wave. Number two, intermittent paralysis due to muscle weakness. Number three, paralytic ileus constipation number four hypokalemic nephropathy edema is characteristically absent in primary hyperaldosteronism or corn syndrome and number five there is polyuria and polydipsia now the lab findings in corn syndrome impaired ability to concentrate urine Number two, neutral or alkaline urinary pH due to increased secretion of ammonium and bicarbonate ions to compensate for metabolic alkalosis. Number three, potassium in mild primary aldosteronism may be normal but may be severe later on. Number four, decreased serum magnesium if hyperkalemia is severe. Number five, metabolic alkalosis and increased serum bicarbonate due to hydrogen ion loss in the urine. And number six, EKG and X-ray shows left ventricular hypertrophy secondary to hypertension which regresses to normal after adenoma removal. So LVH regresses to normal after adenoma removal. Now criteria for diagnosis. Number one, 
Persistent hypokalemia in a patient with sodium intake. Number two, volume expansion does not suppress aldosterone. Normally, volume expression suppresses aldosterone production. Number three, diastolic hypertension not responding to standard antihypertensive therapy. Characteristically, there is no edema in primary hyperaldosteronism. There is decreased renin production. And number seven, aldosterone to renin ratio is more than 30 strongly suggestive of increased aldosterone production. And number eight, the condition may be associated with other endocrine tumors, pheochromocytoma, hyperparathyroidism, or acromegaly. Now, answers to the questions. Question number one, which drugs cause medical adrenalectremy? Metarapone, mitotain, aminoglutithimide, and ketoconazole. Number two, what's the difference between primary and secondary hyperaldosteronism? In secondary hyperaldosteronism, there is high aldosterone and high urine, whereas in primary hyperaldosteronism, there is high aldosterone and low urine. Number two, edema may be present in secondary hyperaldosteronism, whereas edema is characteristically absent in primary hyperaldosteronism. Number three, what's the source and function of renin? Renin is produced in the vicinity of afferent arterioles by juxtaglomerular cells in the juxtaglomerular apparatus. So what does it do? It acts on the angiotensinogen and converts it to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is an inactive substance. Angiotensin converting enzyme acts on angiotensin 1 and convert it to angiotensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is a potent vasoconstrictor so it causes hypertension. And number 2, angiotensin 2 also acts on adrenal gland and increases the aldosterone production. So, it regulates the blood pressure and mediates extracellular fluid volume. Question number four, how and where hydrogen ions are excreted? The hydrogen ions are excreted by the process of secretion, which is an active process in the PCT distal tubule and collecting tubules. Question number five, what's the site of aldosterone action in the kidneys? It causes increased tubular and collecting duct reabsorption of sodium in exchange for secreted potassium and hydrogen. Number six, why there is metabolic alkalosis in Kahn syndrome? Number one, hydrogen ion loss in the urine. And number two, increase bicarbonate absorption. And question number seven, what are the sodium reabsorption sites in the nephron? Number one, PCT. Number two, thick ascending limb of the loop of Henry. And number three, DCT and collecting duct. There, the absorption is controlled by aldosterone. So, the descending limb of the loop of Henry does not reabsorb sodium.